Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to our video series about IT and OT fundamentals. With me is Christian. So, Christian, what is it that you do at the United Manufacturing Hub? Yeah, hi, Jeremy. Uh, so, my name is Christian and um, I'm one of the co-founders together with Jeremy and Alex of the United Manufacturing Hub. I have a business background, so uh, my main responsibilities at the United Manufacturing Hub are marketing, uh, sales and finance focused. And because of that, I also have a lot of uh, conversations with uh, clients and customers, uh, partners and so on, which is why I'm super excited to have this uh, little video series here with you today and um, talk a little bit more about why this topic is important. So, Jeremy, let me know why... As a, from a managerial perspective, why should I uh, look and regard IT, OT, and IIoT in today's uh, markets? Yeah, so very often, so the, the background of it uh, was we did a lot of workshop with a lot of companies, and it was always about they had an IT department, they had an OT department, and they had some, some managers in the discussion, but they were struggling to understand each other. And we did this workshop so that we can create a common ground, the, the common fundamental, so that the IT department understands what the OT is and also the other way around. So then you have the common language and then you can start actually talking about architecture and anything, anything like that. So this was uh, the goal, um, so just so that everyone can participate in the discussion. And... Now we have it uh, also on Learn, and uh, when we finish this video series, we also have it on video. Yeah, so normally when IT people speak IT, that no one else uh, understands, so this is kind of like our your and our approach to make it a little bit more understandable for the common people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, but also the other way around. So OT, the, this stuff is really a nightmare for pure IT people, they really don't get what, what this is. There is a computer in the machine, but it's not a computer. What is it? Uh, so it's, it's, it, it's, for everyone, it's something. That's, I think it's very interesting for everyone to, to learn that. I totally agree. So now let, let us dive into IT. Um, what do you think is uh, important um, from an IT perspective? What should we, what should we know? Yeah, so first... IT and OT, they come from the same tree. So it was somewhere where founded in the 60s. Um, computing was developed and then it split up in information technology where it was about connecting devices, calculation, business operations. And we had the OT part where it's about controlling production. And IT is really about, still, uh, still today, about connecting a huge amount of devices, um, ensuring that these devices are up to date, ensuring that these devices are secure. And you already heard I'm saying devices, so it doesn't matter whether it's an, whether it's an, uh, a, a smartphone, whether it's, uh, it, it's a computer, whether it's a printer. Mm -hmm. uh, for the IT, it, it all fits together. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it was a, or it still is a, I mean, in, in our common common conversations, it's a it's a big topic still. Um, but uh, what 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 are actually the responsibilities of IT? Yeah. So what they what they do? Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, a typical IT department they're responsible for setting up the computers in in a, in the office. So that you have computers, you have your Wi-Fi to connect your smartphones, you have printers, you have Office running on these computers, you have Windows running on it, uh, that everything is keep up to date, uh, that everything's pre-configured, that nobody installs any viruses on it. These are the typical responsibilities of an IT department. Um, they also so uh, other responsibilities, so there's also like programming and... Um, system administration, cloud, etc. But if you have an IT department in a company, usually what you mean is setting up the PCs, printers, etc. If you mean something else like programming, you will typically say pro programming department or something like that. 
Okay, and what are the typical vendors for that? Uh, I mean, when, when I think about it, normally like vendors like Microsoft, Apple, that everyone probably knows from our notebooks, uh, but, but what, are, what else are typical vendors in that sector? Yeah, um, you already said, so laptop vendors, um, but you also have like cloud vendors like AWS, Microsoft Azure, um, printer companies, um, basically everything that, that you might understand as IT, uh, Android, um, th this also belongs to, to IT, um, th this is, or, or Cisco, um, this is more like uh, IT specific, You not everyone might know it, these are the network switches that you have uh, in your um, s server, server cabinet uh, to connect all the network cables with each other, um, you might, at least in Germany, you have like Fritz box at home, um yeah this is also like it's very classic. common for for those uh, from outside of germany it's a very common uh fritzburg is very common wireless setup in uh, the home uh wireless uh network yeah so uh, <laughs> and these are like the the typical vendors that play in the in the field of it and you might already heard it there's nothing about siemens in there there's nothing about rockwell in it, it it's all about pure it Okay, and what is, um, as you say, it, uh, it's uh, the typical responsibilities also about setting up and managing those uh, networks and those devices within the network. What is important when it comes to, to IT? Yeah, so IT, to really summarize it, it's about that nobody wants to build an app for years just so that the end user removes it within 30 seconds. Um, so what's, for example, very high of high importance? Um, if you download an app on, um, and we have actually the same phone, both this and our Android in the, on the Play Store, um, if you're an app developer there, it's really important to have quick development cycles so that you, mm -hmm. within very quick time, that you give the end user, and this also the third point here, the best user experience. And a good user experience is way more important than a perfectly designed app. So we all now, um, especially uh, stuff uh, bought from public funding, uh, these very complicated uh, applications where you have all the functionalities but you really don't know how it works. Uh, this is, uh, if, if you have an app like this, you press on it, you don't understand it, it's very likely that you will just deleted. So this is why it's always important to have an MVP first, to have exactly. like the user experience that you include in your product development and you design the, the software, the system for, for the user and if it's not fitting then you, you have quick development cycles etc to, to update your, your software. Exactly, and you don't want to have and this is where I'm already taking a look at the OT part, you don't want to have quick development cycles for nuclear, uh, nuclear reactors, you don't want to have a MVP for that. You want to have something that's really working. And these are where later will come the differences in. Th that I, I totally agree that you don't want to have a, a MVP in a nuclear power plant. <laughs> um, what is with scalability? Because I think that's a big uh, topic in today's markets um, and all the companies are talking about scalability, especially when it comes to IT. Um, some some uh, buzzwords like cloud and, and, and so on come, come into my mind when I think about scalability. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about that part. Yeah, so... Um, let's take, for example, uh, Netflix. Um, so in IT in general, scalability is really important because in one day you can have 10 users and tomorrow you can have millions. Um, Netflix, just, just one example, um, at 8 a.m. in the morning, nobody will watch Netflix. Um, but if you, in at 8 p.m. in the evening, suddenly there will, have, will be millions of people who want to watch videos, movies, exactly at the same time. So you have it, these systems, they really need to, to scale up and they need to scale up very quickly. Um, Pokemon Go, for example, is like a, also like one of the example cases that's always mentioned there because you might had at the beginning maybe a couple of thousand users, but really within a very short period, uh, you suddenly had millions and the system was able to handle that. You don't have that in OT, for example. You don't have today one machine and tomorrow 1,000. It's always a slow process of acquiring them, etc. So this is why an IT scalability is really important. 
and and uh, now the 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 opposite uh, question: What is less important when it comes to IT? Yeah, for example, reliability and safety. Um, hardware is very often made just redundant. So um, if you have ever been at the server rack, uh, the the professional ones, you can, for example, the hard disks, you can just hot plug them. So there, you, if one hard disk is broken, it will start blinking red. You can just pull it out, put a new one in, and everything is fine. Everything is just made redundant. If if something fails, it's not like an airplane goes down. And in in OT, it is like that. You don't want you want a reliable nuclear reactor there. I think to to OT we will come in the in a in a, a couple of sessions. But uh, yeah, let's let's have a, f a deeper look into the the uh, IT again. Um, what what is it with uh, maintainability and um, and existing standards? Because I, for example, I'm um, talking to to uh, big companies like Bosch and and Siemens. Uh, for them, from an OT perspective, it's a big word, and especially in the industry, we have this ma maintainability with a uh, um, um, s smart manufacturing and stuff like that. So um, tell me a little bo bit more about that. IT perspective of maintainability and standards. Yeah, in, in IT, it's not about a lot of people sit together, they decide on something, and then everyone follows it. It's usually about there's like one random dude in Nebraska, and he has some a nice idea. He does he writes his own protocol, and then others just use it as well. Um, and then after a lot of people use it, there will be committees who try to standardize it. Um, but standards are usually best practices, and they also might change over time. It's not like th there's nothing hard written in it. And there's like a huge, huge uh, difference in, in the mindset. Um, just take, for example, um, uh, JSON. I don't know how to uh, correctly uh, pronounce it. Uh, J-S-O-N uh, for JavaScript. Everyone uses it, but there are there is no actual standard for it. There are so like some standards, but they... <laughs> even differ from each other, but still everyone uses it. So, so some dude came up with the idea, a lot of people followed it, and now it's like a standard, but not standard in the sense of a law. It's more like everyone does it the it's same way. It's a best way. practice and it could change tomorrow so that everyone will use a, a different and uh, let's say standard tomorrow, so a different way to approach that. Exactly, and from that there is comes the point of certifications that certifications are only very rarely legally required. Mm -hmm. um, so you have like health, or oh, the entire health part, where you have some certifications in terms of uh, data privacy and stuff like this. But in general, it, it's not like an OT where, where each component needs to have like hundreds of certifications just uh, that you consider this, okay, it's, it's like a bare minimum. It's not like that in IT. So, so summarizing, you would say that um, the, f the big focus on IT is more on to have a quick development, to have a, um, the best possible user experience, and that it's scalable to have uh, millions of users in a short time, for example. Um, and the, the less important is like everything that comes to standard certification and stuff like that, because exactly. this is just not the, the mindset of, of IT in this case. Exactly. It's not that it's not important. It's just not that important, you know, t like in OT. All right. Got it. Then I would say um, very interesting session. Let's uh, let's skip to the to the next one, uh, software development in, in IT. Um, yeah, let's do it in the in the next part of the video series. Um, so this was the, the the first episode, and in the following episodes, we will then go th through software development, system administration, software architecture, databases, and the cloud. I hope that the listeners enjoyed it and uh, let us know on the feedback. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, if you have any feedback feel free to join our Discord channel. Um, you will find it all further down in the in the show notes. Um, if you have any questions to or feedback, just just join there, write us. Um, we, we will have a guy called Jamuk. Uh, this is like my, my nickname in there, but Christian's also in there. I think you used your proper name. My, my real name. <laughs> I used uh, his real name. Uh, I think Alex also is like with Alex Alexander Kruger or something like this in it. So just drop by, drop us a message. We are always happy to to help you with your your challenges um, and uh, 
yeah maybe chat with you about your your what what you are up to what you're working on um always looking forward to it all right see you next session see you next session <laughs>